on 286. Um, 287. Base. Yeshmi Omer. Ner shall shall Shabbos shall Tanaka. The light that you light in Shul. Shabbos candles and shall Hanukkah. Hanukkah lights. Kulam shall Mitzvahim. Umuta lahadlik mizelazeh. And you're permitted to light from one to one because the only reason why you can't light an ordinary light is because it's Mizoyin Mitzvah. It's not respectful. How do you take something that was designated for Kedusha and use it for ordinary usage? See, even though Shabbos candles are for what? Are for illumination, but that's the Mitzvah. The Mitzvah is to illuminate. Hagov wadin ne'er shel Talmud Torah. O ne'er l'chole. person needs light to study. That's also that light is considered ne'er shel Mitzvah. It's no different than ne'er shel Beis HaKnesses. I mean, what do you light lights in the in shul? So people should be able to daven. People should be able to learn there. Oner l'choler, right? Let's say a person's uh, the halacha is that we remember the Lincoln person's a choloshish for sakona. Person's deathly ill. You're permitted to light a light even on Shabbos. Why? Because if the person feels that people aren't aware of his mental condition or his situation, and from minute to minute, that worry could actually cause cause him to die sooner. That worry. So therefore, although he's, he can't attend to his own needs, but be lighting the light that he should feel assured that people are aware of his needs, that itself is pikuach nefesh. Providing that uh, ass assurance to him that he feels that people are aware of, of his situation. Let's say the person's in a coma. I don't know if he doesn't know the difference. What are you lighting a light for? Right? If, if for the person to, to check him, of course you would light a light to light you. Of course you can't. But here, even if nobody's there, that that he feels that people are, or if they should come in, they should notice him more quickly, whatever is that itself is permitted. Hatzorach ner. Obidyin ner shal beisak ner. Ayin leel sim kuf nadal tzifyud dalit. That's he beis. Right? But we had an opinion before that if for a is not permitted. Right? We said before it was a question of um, right? learning by Neres Hanukkah, you're permitted. It was an argument. The, primary, the first opinion was you're not permitted. See, what the grow wants to say, so to lighting from one to another, also you're not permitted. They want to differentiate. Ner Hanukkah is something else because you're not permitted to benefit from the candles, even for a Kedusha. Okay. Does make it and, and, and shul also to illuminate. Right. So that's why they argue. They argue. They say the Vilna Gaon says according to the opinion that you're not permitted to u even use it for right. davshib kedusha to learn. You're not permitted to learn by the nearest Hanukkah. Correct. Sure. It's, a, it's a mitzvah. So he explained because it, det it detracts from the mitzvah from the presuming nisa. Because people say, why do you light it? He didn't light it to publicize the miracle of Hanukkah. He needs light to, to study by. That was the first opinion. That's why even for a Dov Shabbat Kedushi now, well, let's see, lights in shul. What do you light those lights? Uh, to illuminate. People should be able to daven. People should be able to learn. So that's the same concept as Shabbos candles. So if you, let's say you have no fire and you want to go to shul and light off the, the shul candle to what's his name? To light uh, Hadlok is uh, Yom Tov candles. You permit it? Same idea, right? Not Hanukkah candles. Let's say it's Yom Tif and you have no light, you have no fire. No, no, not Hanukkah candles. Basic Knesset, we're talking about the uh, lights that you illuminate the shul with. Yeah, you're permitted because that's all the same. That's all for illumination. No, because again, it has, it's unrelated because it's presuming Isa. You're undermining what we're trying to accomplish. If people aren't going to perceive it as they should, so what are we accomplishing? No, we had earlier. Once you, half an hour passes, then you can. 
because then you could even use it for ordinary usage after half an hour. Okay. Shad loko se mitzvah v'lo hanocha. Right, we rule that the lighting is the mitzvah, not putting it down. Had loko se mitzvah lo hanocha, shim hoisim nachs bim komish lo l'shem mitzvah chanocha. Madliko shom ve'nitzoch l'atzir l'anich l'shem mitzvah chanocha. He says, let's see, you put a, initially you, put, you have candles set, but it was put there originally for illumination. That's why you put it in that location. They weren't lit yet. And now you light them. When you light them, you have a mind, I'm lighting it for Neres Hanukkah. What's the halacha? Yotzei. Hadlocha is a mitzvah. Even though the original, you didn't originally put them there. You didn't put the candle there or the oil with the wick there for the sake of Neres Hanukkah, because we hold... It's not Hanocho Semitz. It's not putting it in its place or setting it up for that purpose. It's the, it's the kindling. The kindling is the mitzvah. So as long as you have the intent to kindle it for the sake of the mitzvah, that's sufficient. You don't need more than that. That's one aspect of Havloko Semitzvah. He says, You don't have to remove it and put it back, and you're putting it there for the sake of the mitzvah of Hanukkah. Lefichoch. You had a lantern. Ashoshis, shoshis, don't let us call you. Had a lantern. It was burning all day. Shedlik me of Shabbos le mitzvahs Chanako. He lit it erev Shabbos le mitzvahs Chanako. Le motzei Shabbos mechabo umatlik v'shem mitzvah. He extinguishes it and lights it again. What? Right. Even though he's using the same wick, the same oil, the same fuel, doesn't make a difference. Well, when he, he doesn't have to designate it. When he lights it, what does he have in mind? He says the mitzvah. He says Baruch Hashem Lachlan Neir Shel Chanukah. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Kol Mokum Tzorch Sheyad Likeno B'Mokum Hanuchoso. Right, that's that's what Gemara says. You should light it in the location where they are. We'll see. Shem Hidlika B'Fnim. Let's see, he lights it on his table. And then he takes it from the table and puts it in the window. Why? Because what are people going to say? Again, it, it detracts from the pursuing Nisa. If he lets see, he would light it on his table. Even though he had in mind, he's lighting it for nearest Hanukkah. To bring it and put it outside. But what do people say? Initially, he lit the candle, the, the light inside for his own need. And now he's putting it outside. So therefore... It does that detracts from the Pesuminisa. It was not, people will say, it wasn't originally kindled for the sake of the Mitzvah Chanukah. Let's see, he holds the candle in his hand when he lights it, then he puts it down. Also, it's not, it's not it's a problem. Because originally he needed the candle, the light for himself, he kindled it. Even though he had in mind, and he said the Brocha, but, but he did it in his hand, so what does it appear as? The person needs, needs a, a light to illuminate his way, so he holds the candle in his hand. It has to already be in the location where he's actually lighting it, which is a proper location. Now that, that's something else. That you put them in from right to left. So you put in the most recent one that you might see. Why do you do that? If all the, the lighting is okay. No, no. So we have the base mitzvah and then we have mahadri. It's the, the two concepts. You got, it's sufficient to light one candle. You don't have to light more than one candle. We add per night. So what is the first candle? The first candle you light, that is the mitzvah. Right? So you always you light what's closest to you. So what's closest to you? Right? You light from left to right. From left to right. Left to right. And you put them in. From right to left. From right to left. Right. So it's always, it's always on the right. Everything's always on the right. But in terms of doing a mitzvah, you always, what's closest to you, that's what you do first. So what's closest to you is the most left. That's the closest. Well, I understand why you like the best most because that's the one that does it most the best. No. It's not the one that does the most of the things. 
understand that. But it's still, but that's that's the ba the first one we light. That is the base mitzvah. If you would stop at that candle, you fulfilled your mitzvah. So therefore, the, so the mitzvah, the first mitzvah you do, you do what's closest to you. We have a principle: Ema virin ala mitzvos. Right? We you have two challahs Friday night. So the Ramos says, which challah do you cut? You cut the lower challah Friday night, not the, the upper challah. Right, Ernie? Do you know that? Okay. No, no. You put you put one on top of the other. You p you c you're supposed to have them on top of one another. You cut the lower one. Sort of, sort of the sort of Mishvura says, what happens if the upper one is larger than the lush, than the the bottom one? So we have a principle: Ema vina la mitzvos. It's based on the Gemara Yuma. You cannot pass by something which you could fulfill the mitzvah and fulfill the mitzvah with something other than that. So if the upper chal is larger and it protrudes, cl it's closer to you, you're doing the wrong thing to cut the lower one rather than cu cutting the upper one. So he says if the upper one is larger, you should push the lower one closer to you. So because it's close to you, that's therefore you're cutting the one that's first available to you. Otherwise, you have the principle of your elements. I'll give you an example. There's an argument that Morris says in, in Megillah, just to have this, Alex, an expert in Megillah. If you have uh, Adar Rish and Adar Shein, he says, well, Mara has a question, which Adar should pour and bake? The first Adar or the second Adar? So Mara says, maybe it should be the first Adar. Because we have a principle of Eim Avir and Alamitzos. Since Adar, you could fulfill, they could, they could enact it. It is Adar. So by passing the first Adar or the second Adar, that's Eim Avir and Alamitzos. So that's a reason we should have pouring the first Adar, not the second Adar. But we have another, we have an overriding reason because since Purim, Adar is Gula, and, and Nisan is Gula, that's the overriding factor. So there, and that's, and that's the why we rule the second Adar rather than the first Adar. We have Purim. We celebrate it. But there's a principle in Bavin. What, what The Gemara says, what do you put on the uh, Shel Yad before the Shel Rosh? The Gemara gives two reasons. First, because the order in the post is, That's the Torah prescribes. First on the hand, then your head. And the verse secondly, since you were able to put the tefillin first on your hand, and then your head, your hand is closer to you to you, to, your, to the mitzvah than the head. Therefore, based on principle, therefore, you put the tefillin shal yad and then tefillin shal rosh. These are the two reasons. These are the two reasons given the bar in Yuma. Okay, the Afyomi person should ask it on the Gemara. No, which means. Your hands are close to one another. When you have to lift, you have to go higher, right? It's a shamble to Yuma. Yuma is not one of the sechtas we did in uh, in Moit. Okay. No, the upper than the lower. It's based on Kabbalah. Rama very rarely brings halacha, which is rooted in Kabbalah. Only twice in uh, in Shulchan Aruch does it bring it regarding salting the bread. He says you don't salt the bread; you dip the bread. And you should dip it three times. Three times, that's api kabola. And Friday night, you cut the bottom. Let's say, yontif, you cut the upper challah. You don't cut the bottom challah. This is only Friday night. This is only Friday night Shabbos. That's the only time you cut the bottom challah. But let's say, yontif, night, you cut the upper challah. No, you make, you make the, you uh, score the lower one. And then you remove the upper one, and you cut the bottom one. Right, exactly. No, 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 no. It has to be close, otherwise you'd be in violation of the principle of being ma'avrin ala mitzvahs. There is. That, that the Ramos is al pi kabola. He doesn't explain what the reason. Mishnah doesn't explain over there either the reason. That's why Yom Tif, which is not Shabbos, you cut the upper chala, which, which is more logical, since... It's, it's higher up, it's closer to you, that's the one you should cut. You know, it's interesting. It's interesting, it's interesting, you know. I, if you notice, sir, if you know Halacha and you know, there's a famous story of Yisro Salanter. Um, when uh, Rabbi Soslant, even as a little child, he was a, a child prodigy. He already finished Shas when he was 10 years old. And he was a 
exceptional genius, world-renowned genius. Famous story with Yisrael Salanter. He was uh, studying with the Rav in his community. He was one of the Gdol Ador, and he was maybe nine years old. So a colleague of the Rav comes, and the, he sees this little boy standing on a chair, because he was short, and the rabbi sitting behind his desk, and he's engaged in a dialogue with the, with, with, with the Rav. So the, his colleague says to him, he says, Ochenweg, is the way the Balabatman treats you, that you have to take on tutoring? You have to tutor a little boy to, to support yourself? <coughs> so he says, no, you don't understand. He says, speak to the boy. You'll understand who he is. See, he spoke to, he spoke to this nine year, he understood who Rabbi Yisrael Salanta was at nine years old. Okay? So I was going to bring out a point. Yeah, so Rabbi Yisrael Salanta, his Rebbe was Rabbi Yosef Zundel B. Salant. Rabbi Yosef Zundel Salant was, was one of the hidden tzaddikim, Lamad Vav tzaddikim. So he and he, he worked in a distillery. He wa ordinary walk in the and one day he followed him to where he was going, and then he turned it around and he so see somebody following him. So he says to Rabbi Yosef Salanta, he was maybe 16 and he says, what do you want? He says, I wanted you to take me on as your Talmud, as your student. So what do I know? I'm an ignorant person. I know nothing. You know, I put on tefillin, I had a daven. What do I know? I know nothing. He says, you're somebody very special. He says, how do you know I'm special? He says, so Rishos Salanta says, because when you put on your tefillin, it's called Teshita Sarosh. And when you do this, it's Shita Sarambam. And every movement you do is actually, it's, it's exactly, meticulously, based on halacha. There's no movement that you do which doesn't conform with halacha. But you only know it if you know what halacha is. Since as a 16-year-old he knew the whole Torah's entirety, Bavli Yushalmi, so he saw from the behavior of, 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 of Zundel of Salant who he was. But the average person, what he seen, you know, he was a, this, a work, a work in the distillery. Some say very often the way a person behaves on sh at the Shabbos table immediately can tell exactly how meticulous or how much he knows about halacha. First thing, does a person wash my macron and doesn't wash my macron? That's number one. And when he washes, how does he wash it? He w touches, he wets his tips with his fingers, right? How does he do it? And you know, this and that, you see clearly whether he's mimicking or whether he ever studied it from the source. Many things. The way he drinks the cup. You know, the, the Mishnabura says, you know, when you drink the cup, the diff many ways people conduct themselves. Some people today, for hygienic reasons, but as far as, you know, they drink with the cup and they pass around the cup, everybody drinks from the same cup. So, you know, but if you're raised as in, Ameri in the United States with hygiene, it's not really uh, that desirable. You, see, you know, very often, you know, I'm willing to pass on the cup. So what you do is, you take the Kiddush cup, you pour it into another glass, and then you pour it into the small cups and you distribute the small cups. That's the way it's done. But the Mishmur says that when you drink, the, the one who said Kiddush, should drink the, the, his rover vias from the cup that you made Kiddush on. It's not you should pour it in another cup and drink it from that cup. You should drink the wine from the cup that you said the Kiddush on. Some say they're all nuances in halacha. I mean, yote. But the question is, are you doing it properly? What's the proper way? Many, and you see, you observe people, how they cut the challah, how they distribute the challah, how they say, you know, how much they eat before they speak. Mishmogrim Ram says you're supposed to eat a kazayas before you speak. That's l'chatchila, you know, many things. No, you don't. You first pour it off. No, you pour it off, then you drink from the cup, what's left. You pour it off in, the gla in a large glass, and then you drink, and then you, you pour into small cups. It's a hepsic. It's a hepsic. It's the wrong thing. You're doing the wrong thing. Right away after you say you're supposed to drink immediately. Yeah, but, but did you drink yet or didn't you drink yet? But then you, you, it's, it's a hepsic. It's too much of a delay. You're supposed to drink as quickly as possible. Did they drink before you drink or after you drink? They previously see port. This has no value. No value. No, 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 no. They have to have a revius. If each person has a revius in his glass, then they're Yotsu Shomei It's as if they said it. But if you have, they have a tiny cup of wine that's meaningless. It has no value. No, it has no value. I go around where I deal with everybody a certain amount of wine. 
It's fine. No, that's fine. Hundred percent. That's a hundred percent. Nothing wrong with that. That's that's perfect. Perfect. Correct. 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 If you have a lot of people, that's the best way to do it. Otherwise, there's too much of an interruption. And it's inevitable. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. But that's only if you have wine connoisseurs, of course. You know, to, you know, they appreciate good wine. But do they? 